Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about pasteurization. What is pasteurization? Pasteurization is a heat treatment applied to food products to kill the pathogens in milk. So pasteurization is a heat treatment that we are applying to liquid foods. Not only milk, we are applying to juices also. So uh, it is basically a heat treatment that is uh, in this method we are heating the food product. Why we are heating it? To kill the pathogens. Uh, so basically pasteurization is a heat treatment that is applied to liquid foods like milk in order to kill the pathogens present in it. The microbial load present in raw milk is comparatively low. Um, the microbial content of fresh milk that is raw milk is comparatively lower. That is it, it uh, will not contain any microbes. But uh, when we handle the milk that is when we transfer this milk into a vessel or during milking pathogens may get transferred to milk it may be from the vessel or from the hands of the people so uh, milk may come in contact with a number of pathogens during handling so it is necessary to remove these pathogens from our milk because otherwise uh, when we consume this milk containing pathogens it will create a number of diseases in our body so it is necessary to eliminate these pathogens from our milk that is why pasteurization is done how can we do this pasteurization? There are mainly three different methods for doing pasteurization. The first one is low temperature, long time pasteurization. And the second one is high temperature, short time pasteurization. And the third one is ultra high temperature pasteurization. Uh, first one, LTLT pasteurization. As the name indicates, here uh, a low temperature is applied for a long period of time. That is 63 degrees Celsius is applied for a time period of 30 minutes. That is called as LTLT pasteurization. This LTLT pasteurization is also known as batch pasteurization. You have to study both of these names. LTLT pasteurization is also known as batch pasteurization. Coming to the second one, it is high temperature short time pasteurization. So here we are applying high temperature for a short period of time. That is uh, the milk is heated at 72 degrees Celsius for a time period of 15 seconds. And the third one is ultra high temperature pasteurization. Well, a ultra high temperature is applied that is 140 degrees Celsius is applied since we are applying this uh, much higher temperature the time required is only 2 seconds uh, these are the three types of pasteurization uh, next we are going to study about STST pasteurization in detail so now we are going to study about high temperature short time pasteurization as I already told you in STST pasteurization we are applying a high temperature that is 72 degrees Celsius for a time period of 12 seconds. Um, let's look into the flow diagram of HTST pasteurization. Firstly, there is a raw product tank where we are storing our raw product. From the raw product tank, the product is pumped into a constant head tank. From the constant head tank, uh, the product is pumped with the help of a pump to the flow controller. The uh, aim of flow controller is to control the flow rate of the food product. And uh, from the flow controller, the milk reaches the next section. The remaining sections are very important. The next one is the regeneration section where we are actually heating the milk. Uh, so what is regeneration? Uh, suppose I have a hot fluid and a cold fluid. Uh, let's say it's milk and this is a tea. Okay. Uh, I have hot milk at the same time I have cold tea. I have to cool this milk at the same time I, I want to heat this tea. Normally what will I do? For cooling this hot milk, I will put it in the refrigerator so that its temperature will get lowered. At the same time, for heating this cold tea, I will use um, anything like a gas stove or something like that. Okay. But here, for cooling this milk and for heating this tea, I have to use two separate sources of energy. In the in regeneration, what we are doing is we will put this hot milk and cold tea in contact with each other. When two bodies are in contact with each other, we know heat will be transferred from the hot one to the cold one. So when I put this hot milk and cold tea in contact with each other, heat will obviously get transferred from the hot milk to the cold tea. So what happens? Our hot milk will get cold and our cold tea will get heated. That is we are able to accomplish both the purposes without using any external energy. That is energy can be saved. That is the importance of regeneration. This regeneration is applied in the case of pasteurization. So in pasteurization, uh, the raw milk, that is fresh milk, it is in a cold state because uh, usually we store milk in at a lower temperature. Uh, therefore, this raw milk will be uh, at a lower temperature. So we can consider it as a cold fluid. We want to heat this cold fluid. So how can it be done? Of in regeneration for heating a cold fluid we obviously require a hot fluid so what is this hot fluid this hot fluid is the previously pasteurized milk uh, so 
uh, the milk that has been previously pasteurized will be in a will be at a high temperature so before packaging we have to cool that milk obviously we have to lower the temperature from 72 degrees celsius before pack packing the milk so previously pasteurized milk have to be cooled at the same time raw milk have to be heated again um, this hot milk and raw, uh, cold milk that is uh, this previously pasteurized milk and raw milk are brought in contact with each other for uh, heating and cooling purpose in regeneration session that is in regeneration session we are able to heat our raw milk at the same time we are able to cool our previously pasteurized milk that is the importance of this regeneration section usually pasteurized in pasteurization regeneration is carried with the help of a plate heat exchanger so what is a plate heat exchanger in plate heat exchanger there will be a plate and um, a hot fluid will be passed through one side of the plate and a cold fluid will be passed through the other side of a plate uh, this hot and cold fluid will not come in direct contact but both of them comes in contact with the plate of the heat exchanger so heat will be transferred through the plate uh, in uh, pasteurization in HTAC pasteurization normally we use a plate heat exchanger for the purpose of regeneration so uh, I hope you all understand what is regeneration and its importance it is not a normal cooling or heating process in regeneration energy saving that is the important concept behind regeneration so regeneration is completed and we have heated our milk to a particular temperature uh, it is not possible to heat our milk to 72 degrees Celsius in uh, regeneration uh, heating is possible only up to a particular temperature because 72 degrees Celsius is such a high temperature and um, heating to uh, such a high temperature cannot be done through this regeneration alone. We have heated to a particular temperature. Okay. Uh, from the regeneration session, the milk is passed to a filter or clarifier for clarification or filtering purpose for removing unwanted particles. Uh, you know what is a filter or clarifier is. And from there, the milk reaches a homogenizer. So, what is homogenization? Milk consists of a number of fat globules. Fat globules are actually uh, the fat present in milk. In milk, fat exists as globules. Okay. Uh, so, when we keep this milk for uh, some period of time, these last fat globules will get accumulated at the top of the milk and it will exist as a layer at the top. It is not at all appealing to see that milk. So, it is necessary to avoid this process and that is why homogenization is done. Homogenization is actually the process of breaking down the fat globules in the milk. When we reduce the size of these fat globules by homogenization, we can prevent this process. We can prevent the accumulation of fat globules at the top of the milk. That is why homogenization is done. It is done with the help of a homogenizer. So from the homogenizer, the milk reaches the heating section. I already told you that it is not possible to heat the milk to 72 degrees Celsius in regeneration section. We can heat the milk only up to a particular temperature. The remaining heating to 72 degrees Celsius is carried out in this heating section. Okay. The next one is the holding section. So what is a holding section? We know in pasteurization the milk is heated at 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. That is we have to hold the milk at this temperature for a time period of 15 seconds. And that is the purpose of this holding section. In heated section, the milk is heated to 72 degrees Celsius. In holding section, this hot milk at 72 degrees Celsius is held for a time period of 15 seconds. After holding the milk for 15 seconds, the milk is passed into the flow diversion valve. Flow diversion valve. So, what is the requirement of this flow diversion valve? After the holding section, if the milk is properly pasteurized, obviously the milk will flow into the next section. But if the milk is not properly pasteurized, then this flow diversion valve will return the milk back into the constant head tank. And that is the purpose of this flow diversion valve. And all the process will repeat again. If the milk is properly pasteurized, then it will flow into the next section. And the next section is the regeneration section. So what is the purpose of this regeneration section? Already we have seen one regeneration section. Here, after pasteurization, obviously the milk will be hot. Uh, in this regeneration section will cool the milk. Uh, because before packaging, obviously we have to cool the milk. That is, we have to lower the temperature. So this regeneration section is used for cooling the milk. That is, uh, the pasteurized milk will get cold here with the help of the raw milk that is to be pasteurized in the next batch. When milk passes this section, uh, the temperature of the milk will be lowered, but it will not be cold to a much lower temperature. It, the temperature will get lowered only to a particular extent. Further cooling is uh, done by the cooling section. After the cooling section, we get the
pasteurized to protect and this is the flow diagram for HTST pasteurization. So this is all about high temperature short time pasteurization. Hope you all understood the topic. If you have any doubts, uh, please do ask in the comment section. Uh, we can study USD pasteurization in the next class. Thank you.